Good evening, everyone, and welcome once again to the sixth day of the novena of Saint John Bosco. For today's Holy Eucharist, we are very happy and delighted to have Father Philip Falcao, who will be the main celebrant. Father Philip, at the moment, is the assistant parish priest at Saint John the Evangelist at Marol. Father Philip was our principal here from 1984 to 1989. And we are very grateful for all the work that he has done for our institute here. Once again in this Holy Eucharist, we pray for you, for your family and for your intentions. Good evening. Day 6. Incessant activity and work. The hallmark of St. John Bosco. Work, work, work. This was Don Bosco's slogan for all his solutions. Don Bosco's welcoming words to the boys at the oratory was, I promise you work, bread and heaven. For Don Bosco, work was above everything else. His constant advice to his Salesians was, Work zealously, for we shall rest eternally in heaven. As we participate in today's Eucharist, let us ask God for the grace to take up our work seriously. Let us ask His blessing so that we may be able to take on our work of study and learning zealously. And this is hymn number 35, hymn number 35. following and 
turning that appreciation into activity that will spread his glory for the betterment of others. For the times we have not really got fully involved in this mission of Don Bosco through hard work which he stressed so much, let us ask the Lord pardon. I confess to our mighty Lord, Lord, Lord and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have made two sins in my thoughts and my words, in what I have done, whatever I have failed to do, through my faults, through my faults, through my, my most grievous faults. Therefore I ask the blessed Mary in her version, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me and for the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, direct our actions according to your good pleasure, that in the name of your beloved Son we may abound in good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to Hebrews. All the priests stand at their duties every day, offering over and over again the same sacrifices which are quite incapable of taking their sins away. Jesus, on the other hand, has offered one single sacrifice for sins and then taken his place forever at the right hand of God, where he is now, waiting until his enemies are made into a footstool for him. By virtue of that one single offering, he has achieved the eternal perfection of all whom he is sanctified. The Holy Spirit assures us of this. For he says first, This is the covenant I will make with them when those days arrive. And the Lord then goes on to say, I will put my laws into their hearts and write them on their minds. I will never call their sins to my mind or their offenses. When all sins have been forgiven, there can be no more sin offerings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to your Lord. Let our response be, you are a priest forever. A priest like Melchizedek of old. You are a priest forever. A priest like Melchizedek of old. The Lord's revelation to my master. Sit on my right. I will put your foes beneath your feet. You are a priest forever. A priest like Melchizedek of old. A response. You are a priest forever. A priest like Melchizedek of old. The Lord will send from Zion, your scepter of power, rule in the midst of all your force. You are a priest forever, a priest like Melchizedek of old. A response. You are a priest forever, a priest like Melchizedek of old. A prince from the day of your birth, 
on the holy mountain from whom before the day I begot you. You are a priest forever, a priest like Melchizedek of old. You are, you are, you are a priest forever, a priest like Melchizedek of old. The Lord has sworn an oath he will not change. You are a priest, a priest like Melchizedek of old. A response? You are, you are a priest forever, a priest like Melchizedek of old. Let us stand. In number 95. In number 95.
and there are those who have received the seed in rich soil. They hear the word and accept it and yield a harvest, thirty and sixty and a hundredfold. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I was happy when I was asked to come here and to share with you a few thoughts. I don't really like preaching. And many are surprised with that, but I'm saying I really don't like preaching. But preaching brings us closer to places and more than places, the people we have worked with and I have worked here for quite a length of time with Father Bonnie, total of six years, which is quite long I think. We complete the full term and then we take off for another place. Work, work, work. What if we talk about work? We are all working in any case. Some of the work may not bear much fruit depending on the orientation that work has. But I found it very complicated to give in work and activity, incessant activity. That's the worst thing I think for a spiritual life, to be incessantly active. Okay? You can be active and achieve nothing. And you can achieve nothing by being focused and doing a few things. And as I was reading one of the articles, from one of the magazines, it's an Indian magazine, but I'm surprised that all the references were to foreign psychologists, sociologists, and one for was even an MSW, which I suppose is a master of social work. Yeah. And so I'll deviate, I'm not going to talk about work, 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 but it will be connected, everything is connected eventually. So let us see. The first thing in order to give purpose is that we start at the family level of treating boys like girls. If there is an elder sister or something, then she will bring it up and she will bring it up with her own characteristics and her own mannerisms and all that. And so therefore they turn out to be a little effeminate. Of course they may fight with them, they are the stronger ones and so they will always win. But we've got to stop and see that we are not called to be girls. I think the people who will be watching it will be boys. This, uh, okay. Or even the parents. Parents also you have a role in playing with that. Don't let people just grow naturally like some seeds thrown into the flower bed and they're growing there. Then the crop will come. You know, there has to be a purposeful activity. The first one and this is Michael Thompson, a psychologist, says, don't treat boys as if they are defective girls. They are boys. If you do that, then they will really grow up to be defective girls and not boys really in the true sense of the word. Secondly, he says, it is put but it is not observed for what it's supposed to be. Bring back the recess into their life. I was always amazed and I've asked several people but I've never got an answer. I've had even 5,000 in a school, of course 3,000, 2,000 and that was when I was in Wakola. And I always wondered, I asked the teachers and all, but I knew from their response on their face that they were not bothered. How do 3,000 students go to the toilet in 15 minutes? It's impossible. And if they don't ease themselves, you're going to have a problem in the class. But nobody wanted to answer that. Why? Because our schedule will be affected. You know, we have to catch that one something train in the afternoon. And many came to ask if they could be left free for the last uh, half an hour to go to catch the train. So selfish. Then you'll rush through portions. You're rushing and rushing and rushing because you're using only part of the day. And who pays the penalty for it? The boys. It was a boys' school, three thousand fellows. And Wakola boys were really boys, in the true sense of the word. 
Uh, the majority in that school were Muslims. So you can imagine. Uh, I never liked when the teachers refer to them, oh, those Muslim boys, and those Muslim boys, and those Muslim boys, they are hyper. Because at home they don't tell the boys anything. They leave them free to grow. But bring back the recess. And you take the recess. A recess is supposed to be a break. First of all, to ease yourself and feel comfortable. And secondly, is to go through a slight diversion so that you can once again come back and refocus on what is being taught in class. It's a biological need and it's also a psychological need. And if you answer that need, believe me, your achievements will be much better. And this has been said by Lorraine Robbins, who was assistant professor of nursing in Michigan University. Third, make sure they are thirsty. See, very often we don't feel thirsty because we are so engrossed in the activities we are doing that we do not quench our thirst. And so we don't take enough of what is so essential for us, water. This can't be done. Of course, today people bring their bottles. You see them taking out. If the child takes the water to drink, which is only natural if he's thirsty, put that bottle down. Put the bottle down. How will he drink? And if he's thirsty, why shouldn't he drink? You know, the instructions and the teaching have become oppressive. Oppressive. If you see somebody lifting up the bottle, know that he has a need for a drink. Why can't you drink before coming to class? He cannot. Where is the time to drink before coming? And then it doesn't mean that because you have done before coming to class that you will not feel thirsty again. What is that? Quench your thirst. Answer the needs. And we've got to facilitate this to give them a healthy life. Finally, encourage. I think this, there is a big dip in encouragement in today's teaching. We have a huge school there, over 3,000 students. All the schools have got thousands and thousands. But there is one strange fact today. And it's a sad fact. Because they're telling us, we don't trust your education anymore. All the Catholics from affluent families well to do families, don't send them school, uh, their children to the Catholic school. They go to IB school, they go to IGCSC school. They are a better system of education, no doubt. But all the systems of education have the same <coughs> objectives. Practically, one or two changes here and there, the same subjects being taught, equally qualified teachers and yet people junk one and select another. There's a reason why they're doing that. Because in these schools, people are more focused on what they've got to achieve, not only on the subject to be taught. And you get that achievement. That's why you get such high standards in the school. So you should look for this even in yourselves, children and parents, and be sure not only look for it to be achieved by others, but to join hands in achieving this in your children. Do you remember the few points which I told you? Treat boys like boys, and girls like girls. Don't make sissies of boys. Secondly, bring back the recess. You need it. It's not a want. You need the recess. You see how the boys charge out when the recess bell goes? They don't wait for the teachers and all to unless the teachers warn them, you better not go till I leave the class or something like that. Otherwise, you are down the steps. And if you are in a school, and I was at one, which has wooden steps, good Lord, you must see the noise as they are running down. A thousand children, where are they running? To have a small game of five minutes, ten minutes to the toilet 
and to have their little snack. One necessary thing. Thirdly, make sure they are thirsty. And if they are thirsty, answer that need. See that there are enough water fountains for them to drink. In spite of telling them, bring your own water, that is for safety reasons, not because there isn't water there. See if the water can be purified to the extent that they can drink it safely. Today it is fairly safe. Otherwise, they will not drink. You can sustain your thirst, but it is not good for the body. Thirdly, encourage them. Very seldom does a teacher ever encourage the students in what they are doing in their activity, in their attention. If you pick up one boy, and uh, sometimes I do that, uh, I can see today that you are all attentive in the church. They are not always attentive, but sometimes when, uh, when they are attentive, then you find that those who are not attentive also focus their attention on you. So encourage them in what is good, and what is good will lead them to greater good. And finally, take the goodies out of his room. For heaven's sake, please do that. What are goodies? Sweets, chocolates. I know that even in our parish, it's not a very rich parish, people who have one television in the children, for the children and one for the parents. And then there are the other ones. Almost every one of them has a smartphone, which very often is smarter than the children themselves. Almost every one of them has that smartphone, and what they are doing from morning to evening on that smartphone, I do not know. YouTube, very interesting. No, I also watch YouTube. I like uh, the program just for laughs, gags. But if you keep Believe me, if you keep watching that program the whole day long, you will become a laughing stock of the people. I don't think you like becoming a walk, uh, laughing stock. I don't like to become a walk, laughing stock. Maybe sometimes I become one inadvertently. So get that one out, those goodies out. The smartphone, the TV if you have one, Today, you, what you're watching on the TV, they watch on the smartphone. And, worst of all, the games that you play on TV. They are so attractive and they are addictive. But B was addiction, it came under, they wanted to ban it. But I know that there are people who are still using it. Without realizing it, it wipes away all your spare time and healthy spare time activities. This is one institution which not only has grounds, we also have a ground there, but grounds used for good and healthy activities. You already see people here, now it may be a little lower because of this uh, coronavirus pandemic, but otherwise right from the days I was here, I was here first in the 70s. It's a, very, a long time back, even the body was there, very strangely and fortunately, both the times I was here, Father body was here also. And believe me, I, I learned a lot from him, uh, much more than uh, in the seminaries and anywhere else. Because he was absolutely focused on what he did and he got you to do it. And I like that about him. That's why I was here second time for five years. But then I went to Cape and to the US and all that. But in those five years, we won the Tata Shield. I mean, we had hardly any students, sir. It was a very small school. We won the Tata Shield twice. And I think for the three other years, we got run around. Very marginal difference between that and it was real hard work for the students. I enjoyed watching them from the top. Practicing day in and day out under Bajaj. So, if they could do it, you could do it as well. Remain focused. Take out all the unnecessary things from your life, even if they are attractive, they are not necessary. 
and build up a good personality, a human and a manly characteristics in yourself. God bless you and pray that I too may do that. Even though we are a little advanced in age, that we may do the same because you remain for, uh, as young as your thoughts and your deeds. If your thoughts and deeds are old fashioned, then you are an old person. If they are of the times, then you will remain a young and relevant person. And this is my prayer and wish for all of you today. fully aware that you love us and that you provide for us when we humbly ask of you deign to accept our prayers which we bring before you at this Eucharist. Our response shall be Lord hear our prayer. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. <clears throat> for the Pope, our Bishop Oswald Gracious, the religious and laity. Lord, we ask you to bless them for all the efforts they put in building God's kingdom on earth. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the young, the poor, and those at risk. Lord, we pray for all youngsters in troubles and difficulties, worries and depression, that they may find peace and consolation in Jesus the King of Peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the missionaries, Lord, we pray for all missionaries who have answered your call to work in your vineyard. Bless them for their generous sacrifices and protect them so that they may continue in your mission. Be their strength and support, especially in moments of difficulty and discouragement. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our family members and the Salesian family. Lord, we pray for all the members of the Salesian family and our near and dear ones. We pray that the families grow in fidelity and commitment and bear witness to your love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For ourselves, Lord, we pray for all of us present here, that we may be able to grow in holiness by doing our daily duties with honesty, uprightness, and joy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear our prayer. and pray for your personal intentions. Lord God, listen to the prayers and grant our needs and our prayers, those which we have made to you aloud and in the silence of our hearts. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. We will not accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of your sitting in the Holy Church. Accept our offerings, O Lord, we pray, and in sanctifying them, grant that they may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We will lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and just. just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, and all your saints with one heart bless you. Therefore we to extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like a new form, so that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this for all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be all out to you and for many, for the forgiveness of all sins. Do this is in the memory of all me. The mystery of faith. Dying. You destroyed our death, rising you restored our life, Lord Jesus, our coming to glory. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have helped us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring unto the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, also gracious, our Bishop, his auxiliaries, and all the clergy, religious, and faithful. Remember all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint John Bosco, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Give us this day our daily bread, and 
forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the freedom of the Lord, the glory is yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am Lord, that you should enter on my roof. The Lord is here, the word of my my soul shall be in thee. Lord Jesus, thank you for coming into our hearts. Lord, as you enter our lives, we ask you to give the necessary strength and will to work assiduously to help bring your kingdom to completion in our world. O loving Mother Mary, be our constant support and guide. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that receiving the grace by which you bring us to new life, we may always glory in your gift through Christ our Lord. Amen.
prayer in the gospel. It's universal, the universal call to holiness, the sixth day. Don Bosco stressed three points which deeply impressed Dominic Savio. It is God's will that we all become saints. It is not hard to become a saint. There is a great reward in heaven for those who become saints. Later, Dominic told a new student of his discovery. It's simple. Here we make holiness consist in being very joyful. Our only worry is to avoid sin as the great enemy of our souls. Stick to these easy things, but be faithful to them. Pray to Don Bosco and ask for his help. Lord of the Lord, Lord, in your providence, you gave us Saint John Bosco, father, father and teacher of men, who worked with our eyes and seen under the guidance of the Lord's humanity for the good of the Church. church. Arouse in us the same heart of solid charity, which urges us to seek the salvation of our, our brothers and so serve you, our one and only Lord. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who is God and who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love, serve, and work for the Lord. Thanks be to God. In number 359. In number 359. We thank you, O Lord, for the gospel. In him we see the wonders of your love. signs of the times, and he made it by the Spirit, he was a man of God. We thank you, O Lord, for the apostles, in him we see the wonders of your love. You fill him with gifts of nature and of Oh, oh, oh.